No, 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 that's the hot seat right there. That's the hot seat right there. I'm ready. I'm sort of on up boards. I'm ready. So, so thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else have business? No all business? Okay, all business next item. Board will entertain any discussion about old business. So we're on uh, communications from the golf course. I'm sorry, Jeff. Number five. Number five. <laughs> Sorry. I apologize. My crib sheet was in error. Sequential. Number five. Number five. In case it's not professional, you want to see the report? Who wants to go first? Brian, you look ready. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and go. We'll go down the line, I guess. <laughs> Um, so for sunset, uh, March 22, we're projected to do uh, $32,000 in revenue. Actuals came in at $38,507. Um, rounds projected to do $1,493. We actually came in at $1,476, so a little bit on the low end. Um, so far this month, I'd say we are ahead of the projections. Uh, First to the 25th, we did, we've done $49,000 in revenue so far for April. Um, and then round wise, we're uh, just under the bus end of the projected for April as well. But the weather has been better, finally, but it's still, still lacking moisture. I can, I can say that for sunset. I don't know how the other two still be holding up, but I think we need some rain. I'm a little sad we didn't get in the rain this weekend or uh, today. I'm <coughs> glad it didn't rain on me for the invitation, but I'm sorry for the rain. I did not forget that. So, um, any questions for Sunset? I'm a new member, so I'm trying to get back on me. What accounts for the increase in revenues over the budget when the rounds are short? So, when the rounds usually. Um, well, there's a lot of annual passes, a lot of memberships that you're running within the beginning of the year. Um, I can tell you this much. I asked Danny, what, about a week ago, if you had any of the player's cards still left in your desk. Correct. I picked them up a couple of days after I asked her, and I sold every single one of them the day after I got them in the show. I have none left. We are completely sold out. Do so I have any left? You had, you had a very small stack in your desk. You said not to take one with the city. So and I have the ones with the sticky notes. Yeah, I okay. didn't see any others in your office. I didn't really scavenge too much. It's not my place. So. But we sold, um, well, you might have sold that. Yeah, see yeah. Um, but I can tell you, it was over five. It was about $3,800 in revenue just for those alone. So the top of the year, largely. Yes. Yeah. And, and most of, and Rick is one of the players, he has a membership. <clears throat> He's got a 660 elite membership, and usually, <coughs> depending on when they purchase it, it comes around at that same point in the year. Um, yours is May, yeah. yeah, so 
is will come up for renewal here in the next month and a half or so. And a lot of them that came started to come up in April. And, and so that's that's where we're at. So. Any other questions you want to answer? Sam, you're next to him, please. Thank you. Good to see everybody in person and not on my computer screen, which I always really screw up when we do uh, Zoom meetings. So I bet I'll screw this one up too, guys. Okay. Um, revenues for Youth Creek for the month of March uh, 141649 which is about $59,000. Of our prior years, which did a lot to get, to get us caught back up or close to it after being shut down for the first two months of the year. And then on the grounds for the month of March, and our, it's our total for the year as well, 2,162, which is month to date and year to date is 709 rounds um, ahead um, for the month of March. And down under nine months of the year. But I did want to report um, from April through today, and we're actually about 5,000 ahead for the entire month of prior years, April. So by the end of, uh, end of April, we're going to be ahead for the year. We're doing good. The weather's great. We're busy. When the weather's bad, we schedule a tournament and stay busy anyway. Invitation <laughs> <laughs> was this past weekend, and uh, we played uh, very well. Is in the weather. Um, I get tired of patting Dan who's back all the time, but um, I got to tell you that the people that play at our event, we got people coming from Cheyenne, Wyoming, and Castle, I mean, all over the state. They come to play this event. Unbelievable amount of comments on the course conditions. The greens are ridiculous, so good job, Dan. Thank you. It was, uh, it was great comments. <laughs> Now All right. And I agree with Sam. It's nice to see everybody. You know, not just see you on the screen, so this is nice. I even set up a lesson tonight. That worked out good. <laughs> <laughs> no phone call lesson set up. Um, yeah, I would echo what the, what the, what the fellows have said. The, uh, and I don't have COVID, but I am going to cough. This is just going to happen today. So in the last three weeks. <coughs> so bear with me. Um, we, we have a great, we're up 31,000. We're up 32,900 over uh, the prior year for April, and that did go a long way to catching us up. And I think we're about 5,000 this, we're way ahead of this month. Again, we're about 5,000 short of being caught up for the year. So compared to last year, not necessarily projections, but compared to last year, and we're just Maybe 150 rounds up over uh, last year for April, and yeah, April ended up, April ended up being a great month. And March obviously was a good month too. So I would I would agree with what Sam said. We, we went a long way to get caught up, and I really after starting in the hole as deep as we did, I thought to myself it's going to be that year where we blame it on the weather and we never get caught up, and it was all because of that tough start. And we're catching up. So I think we had a bad April last year for a while anyway, we had a lot of snow. And so this year, even though we've had wind, the warm temperatures still bring the people out. And so it's been it's been great. And uh, and I would echo what Sam was saying about the invitational. I, my invitational, I had 139 players, which for the Twin Peaks Invitational, which is the opening one for the year as far as the Colorado Golf Association tournaments, that is the busiest, the fullest my invitational's ever been. And it's nice because, you know, these golfers are really good players, a lot of them. You know, we had over 50 players in championship play, and those guys are all three and less handicaps, okay? And so, you know, I'm, I'm spending the weekend with 50 guys that are three and less handicaps in April, coming out of the winter where we've had nothing but dry conditions. We played all the way into the end of December, and just literally between the geese and the golfers, we just took the grass off the golf course. and. To be able to put a product out where these guys not one complaint, they all know they're good golfers. They know the difference and they know what time of year it is. So they know that whatever it was the maintenance crews did, Ryan, to, to make the golf courses as good as they were, it was really neat. And the one guy that complained, he was mad at me because he thought I set it up harder. 
because he played bad on day two and blew his chance to win. But he was upset with me because he thought I set the course up hard, and I actually didn't set it up hard. I had Brian and I talk about it every year. We try to set it up. We don't want to set it up hard because we actually want people to shoot low scores. When you shoot low scores, you're happier, you smile more, you enjoy it more. And because uh, with these, with our grains at Twin Peaks, we fight you to set it up hard. It's brutal. You can't. It's not even fair because there's just so much movement in the greens. So I just can't say enough about what Brian has done, the staff has done, been shorthand for the last couple of years, <coughs> trying to get through all these tough times and uh, putting out a product that's really good. And I'm just super thankful. And and it's shown in, in, in golf. The haystack effect is definitely, I think Brian will agree with that. The haystack effect is definitely continuing. And you you come out here on Friday afternoon or Saturday afternoon and you got you got so many kids from CU that, that drive in the extra 15 minutes to play our golf course. I've never seen anything like it. So we are getting a lot of players from ASAP. So it's been really, it's been really kind of just found business for us, so it's really nice. But, you know, keeps us busy for sure. All right, any questions for Twin Peaks? Yeah. So I just wanted to mention that to be that close to last year is is amazing. We're we're coming off of probably two of our, our best years in in golf and if not ever a very long time. And uh, when we talk a little bit later about course conditions, we'll we'll talk more on on what's happening out there with the numbers. But you know, last year we had. 111,000 rounds, which is just unheard of in Longmont. We're, we've always, at least since I've been involved, it's always been right around the, the 90,000 mark for the three courses total. So people are, are coming out and it just doesn't appear yet that that there's gonna be any de decline. So uh, the golf, golf courses are doing great. The, thanks to the pros and, and the staff that are working to make this happen, but it's been pretty incredible to, to have the, the number of golfers that we're seeing. Good. Any other comments before we move on? <coughs> Next item on the agenda is old business. I understand there is no old business. Correct. Moving on to new business. Well, uh, so I didn't print out what I sent you guys or sent them around right now. I just uh, finished printing this off earlier. So, date still is the same. We haven't had any changes, no discussions recently that I'm aware of. We haven't really had time yet. Um, so, a few things that you're going to see on the page there, I kind of changed, not changed the logo, I just modified a few things for a, a few options to do on, on a few things that would be beneficial, showing it's 100 years, still showing our logo and our established date. Um, the poker chips there, I think at one point Jeff and I had discussed um, doing giveaways and whatnot, so I've already ordered about 700 uh, poker chips and that's going to be something that we'll probably end up, uh, one of the options I'll give away for the event. Um, each side has the city's logo on one side and then it has the golf course, Sunset Golf Course 100 years on the other. Um, still playing on music, still don't have uh, any information on who it is. I don't know yet, at least for a fact. Um, I'm out of that conversation. Um, we're gonna do food still, you know, drinks. Not much has changed from the last few times we've kind of discussed it. There's a lot of stuff that I'm ordering that is just taking very long to get in. Um, hats on the back side, I, I did a second round of those hats. So I already have those hats inside the pro shop, minus they don't have the city's logo, they just have flags on. I have the city's logo version coming. Um, Jeff is gonna give that to his staff, um, I believe. That was one of the discussions, so I have a lot of those hats that are going to go to him, and whatever remaining, I will probably end up doing a giveaway as well for some of this stuff. Um, I'm working with some vendors trying to get other products to, to kind of do ideas about 
who've uh, kind of discussed between a bunch of us brainstorming 100 days of sunset. Um, it's kind of a, a an email kind of campaign, I believe is the way Eric just said it. Um, and it's going to, we're going to start to figure out when we're going to start doing things, what we're going to actually minimize down on this list, um, whether it's history, tips, um, kind of shared moments, you know, all kinds of things. So that's that's a work in progress still, but um, I do have the printout along this bit. Um, I know Golf Now has been sending a lot of people guys, I think it's off that sent those right now. So if you guys are all on our emails, you're getting a lot of kind of emails from Twin Beach, U Creek, and Sunset. They may be duplicates, but the Sunset ones will start to change soon once we uh, once we come down to the agreement of which ones we want to send out and how we want to make sure it's worded, make sure it's worded properly. Um, any any anybody have any suggestions for for me? For, uh, for the 100 years, something you'd like to see for us to do, potentially, if, if it comes within the, the, the realm of our needs. Let's put it that way. I can't do that thing. I can't do the farm. I can't do the free ball. I can't do the free ball. <laughs> you know, a lot of people collect flags. Are you doing any flags at all? Do you do? That's, a, that's a good question. I have not actually explored that route. I do have. Um, I think I think all three of us every year we usually get a German um, book uh, from I forget what company it is, but they have a catalog of literally everything and anything for if you're gonna buy for parents, flags are in there and I looked at it. So I, it's on my marked page for me. So I may I may dabble a couple of those. If you want you want them done. Do them. Oh absolutely. I, I, I usually have flags in my basement. So that's one of the collective things. Poker chips are my big thing, though. I literally have two, three, four stacks of poker chips. Any other comments? Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Do you have any help? Are you doing this all by yourself? So the ordering side of it is me. I, I handle that side of it. But we're we're sitting down. I believe it's Jeff, myself. Eric is not part of it anymore, correct? She is. She is still. Um, Sam Calhoun, um, Daniel, Danny, and is Ryan going to be? And Ryan's part of it too. Yeah. So we're still, we're, we're, we just haven't had an in person meeting. And every, we've had a couple, we've had one or two Zoom meetings. And, you know, it's still discussing and finalizing a lot of things. You know, a lot of the, the not just the day, the day's finalized every week. And it's just a matter of finalizing the music. And then the next time we meet is going to be actually a person at sunset and finalizing where do we want the true place for the stage to go. Are we going to close the golf course early? That kind of question we're still up in the air. Based on traffic and whatnot, it's going to come down to that. Those are the situations. Sam, no, I'm not doing well. yeah. Sam Calhoun is, is our event person in recreation. Okay. And she does events like Rhythm on the River. So she has a lot of experience with that. And Agreed to help us in golf. Okay. Would the city provide any lessons they learned from promoting the Longmont birthday last year? Was there someone there you talked to? So that's part of the the list that we have going, and Erica <coughs> was part of when we Creek did the, uh, the 20th anniversary. So we've got like email lists that we're going to be using, and it's just a matter of developing a, a campaign that's not going to drown people with emails. It's a matter of, you know, Showing excitement, showing the history, you know, like for instance, uh, hundred dollars for a horse drawn lawnmower in nineteen twenty two. Actually nineteen twenty three, excuse me. I have that in the book. We I gave Danny all the stuff I had that I had come across and that other people had given to me that made photocopies, um, newspaper article from nineteen twenty two that says August twenty uh, August twenty second, nineteen twenty two. Longmont is to have golf course. That's our established shape that we know of. Um, anything after that, I mean, I've got meeting minutes from 22 all the way up to, I believe it was 56. Um, handwritten and cursive. Sometimes you can read it, sometimes you can. 
but there's a lot of highlighted sections. Um, Howard Macklin, and he's the one that gave it to me. He plays the Sunset quite a bit, and Twin Peaks. Um, he gave me the book. Gosh, and then it's been years ago, he probably seven years ago. It just sits behind my counter, and then I came across a book that I gave Manny, and it was just this. I had no idea what it was. It was on top of a men's book box, and I just said, Wong Wong Golf Club. That was what Sunset was named. And I opened it up, <coughs> and there is bank deposits, there's checks from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. I mean, it's one of those things that you look at and it's like, well, I don't, I'm not a history buff by any means, but do I nerd out on this? Yes, absolutely. I do. <laughs> because it's, you don't see this stuff anymore, and let alone to be able to hold that stuff and say, oh, here's a handwritten little, you know, three by five sheet from the superintendent that day with a list of everything that was done. I mean, I, it's, it's weird. It's really cool, but you know, <coughs> you don't have many pictures. Like that, that's that's the unfortunate side. So we're trying to dig that up if we can find something. Any other items for mine? No, there's no one on the second item on the business. It was stacking challenges. Yep, that, that's me. And uh, the challenge. I'm the challenge. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. So for the first time at Twin Peaks in a year and a half, we're fully staffed with regular employees. And uh, it's been a uh, long, hardcore for us to get to that point. We still are short three, four people. Uh, temp people for here in that sunset. One of the things that uh, council did in late March was allowed us to raise minimum wage within the city to 1550, which we're we're starting to see some results of that. That that allows us to pay anywhere between 1550 and 1750 for our employees. And uh, we're hoping that that will make a difference that we can get uh, fully staffed and actually stay staffed. One of the challenges that we were having is that people would sign on to come to work for us. And then before they were given permission to actually work, they were finding other work and not even coming for one day. So it has been a, a real challenge. And uh, again, my thank you to city council and the city manager for helping us uh, be able to get some additional resources to pay people a little bit more money. And if you don't mind, I'll lead right into course conditions. With that, I think uh, in particular at Twin Peaks and at Sunset, that you can kind of see some of those things where we just haven't had the staff to do everything we've needed to do over the last two years. And then you add on top that we're having our busiest seasons ever, that it's really starting to show some wear on the golf course. And uh, I think that over the, the coming couple of months, you'll start seeing some results of being fully staffed and, and being able to spend some attention to some of those things that weren't getting done. Um, Brian, it, it, uh, his golf course here at Twin Peaks and at Sunset, just did some seeding and fertilizing. And if the weather ever stays warm enough during the night, we might actually be able to grow a little bit of grass. But uh, it, it's out there and just waiting for Mother Nature to help us out. Um, and, and then the other thing that I think will ultimately really impact this golf course is being able to get our new irrigation system in. Um, the, the current setup, uh, the heads are 100 feet apart. Uh, the, the new system will be 75 feet apart, so the watering will be much more accurate. We won't have as, as much waste, and we're hoping that we'll be able to start that work right after Labor Day and be done by mid-June of next year. And I, I think with new pump stations that were using the original pump stations from 76, 77, um, that I think the, the future looks very bright for Twin Peaks and 
in the condition of, of this golf course. We're still a couple of years out before we'll get to sunset. The city's doing a large uh, water tank replacement there at, at the golf course. They've asked us to wait till 2024 before we would do any uh, work on the irrigation system there once they've completed that project. But uh, again, I, I'm really pleased with Dan and Ryan and, and the work they've done. Um, they, they're working very hard to try to, be, to put the best product out there. And uh, we've got some work to do, but uh, I think we're headed in the right direction. Great. Any questions or comments? And then the next one, do you create a conceptual whole house design? I'll speak on that. Um, so we've gotten together in the last month or so since this has really kind of uh, taken a hold and we came up with a design with the help of our architects. And so if you look at the picture, this here is the existing part of the clubhouse that we have here where the pro shop is. And then all the carts are parked under there, underground, and, and they go out to right about here. So um, what we're planning on doing with the help of the architects is adding about 6,000. Um, so we're going to add about 6,000 square feet of upstairs seated area. So you'll see this area here, we'll be able to see, that'll be the main dining room. And it won't be open all the time, but it'll be open for, you know, maybe like Friday through Sunday or Thursday through Sunday, you know, for, for dinner, breakfast, lunch, whatever Sam um, wants to do, you know. Uh, and that'll see about 120 people. You'll see back here in this area, there's, um, they say meeting rooms. So there'll be some small meeting rooms that'll be available in that area. And those will also be used for, um, we're gonna try to get more weddings and uh, events like that out there. Um, and they'll be used like a bride, a bride's room, a groom's room, and then there'll be um, areas in between for storage, you know, give them, keep them separated, give them big enough rooms to, to uh, be able to change in and do whatever you do for those days and stuff. And then if you look here, there's a, there's a bar area right here that'll look out to the west. We'll be able to look out over the mountains and we'll look over the 18th green and the lake, you know, 10 T, the sledding green, all that area. Um, and then you will actually have a full kitchen or a full, yeah, kitchen, you know, a stove, a grill, everything you need to put out full meals and stuff like that. Um, and then there'll be restrooms back on this side. The reason we want, we had another drawing too, but the reason we went with this one it's because you can see down here, you can't see it, but it says keep the pavilion. There was another drawing where it went out about 50 feet where we would lose the pavilion, but he really likes to do his tournaments out there. And, you know, we have other events where we go out to the pavilion and, and keep that. And plus, you know, it was donated by the Kiwanis back when the course was built in 95, 96. So it might, who knows what we could run into if we tried to get rid of it. So, so this will keep the pavilion, which will give us, um, you know, extra seating, be able to do a couple different events, maybe, you know, during, during the days or, or whatever. But then you'll see, I have some uh, written up here. This will be the deck. It'll kind of wrap around <coughs> the side and back into here, but this will be the main seating area of the deck up here. And it'll seat about 50 people, kind of the same amount we have up there, same tables and, and set up like that, but that'll, go out into this area. And then we decided to add a door here so people can go in and out of the bar area and servers can, can go in and out easily there. And then over here on this, which would be the south side, it'll, there'll be some stairs added here so the staff can get down to the pavilion and, and people can up can come up and use the restrooms and all that. So, um, but then if we do get to this and we add it, we will probably turn this all into pro shop area for Sam. So he'll be able to, you know, have way more room to spread out his merchandise, his clothing, everything like that. And it'll take away the snack bar inside and 
he'll kind of work out of the kitchen and the bar if this all gets built and, and hopefully we're on our way it's moving very very rapidly and it's exciting you know you creek has never had anything like this it'll be really fun to be able to you know have dinners there have huge outings I'm not sure about weddings but <laughs> Just kidding, we'll be all right. <laughs> Are you in for Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm again setting them up. <laughs> no, but that's kind of the the plan that they've come up. This would this this would just be a little storage closet down here. They had it kind of drawn as an entrance, but we decided that it would just be better for just one entrance. And because Sam right now doesn't have any storage up at the clubhouse, so the more kind of storage we can build up here the better off he'll be able to keep, you know, all his stuff, heights and stuff. He has a lot of racks and stuff that he has to take down to our maintenance shop. And then, you know, it's a, it's got to coordinate to get everything up there. You know, some weekends we're not in all the time, so it, it turns into a little bit of a challenge, but, but we make it work. But this, with all this, he'll be able to keep everything up there. So, um, and then this would turn, he would get a, a bigger office over here. Um, the restrooms would still stay in this building. The, but just a lot more space to, to for merchandise and all that. So, so it's exciting. Anybody have any questions about it? Ideas? Just in terms of the spacing, there's that uh, paved driveway to the south. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that would, would go, go all the way up to there. Or? Yes, it would go. You know, if, when you come into you Creek, you Creek, there's that sign that says you Creek and those tall junipers. That's about where the edge of it is. So we would lose. We, if you, you can kind of see these faded lines right here, that's that yeah. car path that you're okay. talking about. Okay. So that would end right here, and then it would turn here. This this is actually the um, uh, deck is it hangs over, so you can still drive under there. So our idea is to have carts be able to park here, come up, use the snack bar. Hopefully it'll speed it up, you know, so everybody at the turn isn't slowing down the play, heading to the back. And then we would probably put like a, kind of almost like a circle drive. There'd be another cart path that would go around the pavilion on the north side there. And you'd be able to make a nice loop right back out to number 10 T. So, so yeah, we would lose that, but it would benefit us more in, in the long run. Any other questions? Yes, the range of costs, high low. We haven't we, got anything yet. We're <laughs> we're waiting. They they indicated this week. So any, any kind of timetable yet? Well, there there's no money for it yet. Okay. So we have a capital improvement project that uh, is, is unfunded. Um, but one of the things that that Tim is advocating is that we get this done. And so we have someone in council that is gonna help push this to possibly get done. We would, uh, we typically start budget discussions. The first comes week in May. I, I don't know if they'll be on, on our May 3rd agenda. Um, but if, if the budget, but if not May 3rd, it'll be May 10th, but it'll be early in the month. Uh, and, and the conversation I had with Jeff was I'd hate to get it, just to do what we're doing here and get into the budget discussions and not know, not a number that, that could be on the table for the 2024 budget. And the way the city budgets for capital projects like this, I'm guessing we're talking about $3 million. Dollars. A little more than that. Um, so there's been a project code for 27 years on the books for this budget. Uh, never any money out of here. So, Having a capital or a public improvement budget code is not a problem. It's been there. Um, but it won't, the, the city will accrue. We won't get, this won't get budgeted in one year. It'll probably take two or three years. That's the way we do this. I'm not crazy about it all the time. Wait, that's the way it happens. But it, we won't even get started without this. Right? And so if there's, put the number up, uh, half a million, a million, I don't know what we want to do. But, uh, but there'll be some discussion about what the number should be to get it started to accrue what it's going to require to do this capital project in this budget. So no guarantees where it comes out, but I guarantee we're going to talk about it. And they say, is there an elevation unit to this or just? Not as soon as we get that, we'll bring it back to the next meeting. 
So this part of that do you also talk about a return on investment or something like this? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure there's lots of them together as well. Yeah. Yeah. Other golf courses do similar drills and yeah. everything else comes to mind as other ones. <clears throat> Yeah, there'll be, I'm certain we'll have discussions about it all the time. I said before, I live in that neighborhood, it'd be nice to have a nice ball around there because we don't have. Yeah. Really well, and for your, for whatever, whatever it's worth, you know, let your neighbors know. Because I've heard this all the yeah. time. What do you hear about traffic and traffic mitigation? That was, when, when, we, when this advanced, that was part of the proposal. But if this if this gets legs, just so, so the neighbors know, yeah. we got to do something on New Creek Drive to make certain. As we, if we attract more traffic, which I hope we do, but we've done what we need to to, to mitigate traffic speed and, and yeah, they just did 17 out front of the place. So. I wish we could get maybe on 17 as well. Maybe we'll get that to the photo right on that. Any other comments on your quick? All right, the next item, uh, item from staff. I, I have two yeah. things. Sure. Uh, we talked a little bit last month about the bylaws. Right. I had. Uh, sent those to Lego for their review and they didn't get back in time to be on this agenda. So we will have those on the June meeting agenda. And then uh, uh, Paul and I have been emailing back and forth and um, considering the, uh, concerning the interview committee, uh, he is asking to be removed for that. From that, uh, he thinks there may be a possible conflict with okay. some of the folks that have applied, so we need somebody else to join Ann and I on that committee. You'll do it, John? Sure. Okay. Great. Thanks. Great. Thank you. That's all I have. Next item is item from the board. Any items? I have one. I thought we might leave on a high note. This really is for Jeff's attention. The other day, there were four of us at Sunset going out to the third round six. With all of a sudden, sprinklers came on. <laughs> no offense. My wife was so unhappy, emotional. I called the clubhouse. I don't know what she said, but I like to not to listen. <laughs> anyway, shortly thereafter, one of the young grounds personnel people. Young man came, did a great job of apologizing and quite her her down the wall. A little bit later, Ryan showed up and said, you know, I'm sorry. So long story short, we were soaked. We finally got on to seven, but everyone left happy. So the staff did a great job, Jeff, of pacifying all four of us. Well, I'm sorry that happened. I mean, we, I know it needed the water. <laughs> I already had a shower. So. <laughs> Danny, Danny Soul was the one that apologized. He's the I did. Nice he's young man. He's the senior a good job. So I'm um, sure Jeff here was saying about staff. He doesn't want to hear it. It's okay when you didn't hear a good stuff. So I want yes, to ask Thank you for sure. My wife insists that I apologize for her. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm used to doing. Uh, anyway, no items from the uh, board? I have a question. Can you, yes, sir. Who is responsible for the role of the call the golf course and somebody at the golf course have an answer? Is that, is that for the city employees or is that somebody contracting? That is there in Chicago. Does anybody do a quality, yeah. quality review of them and try them out once in a while? They're not very Professional. I'll, I'll speak on that if you guys don't mind. It's more of a comment. No, um, I've actually had a few complaints and I'm working with Jennifer. Uh, I actually don't know Jennifer last name. Hey, well, yeah, yeah her, 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 new, her new last name. Yeah. So well, Jennifer Funk is our Golf Now representative. Um, so Golf Now is the one that handles those calls because we're partnering with them for our trade times and our tee sheets and everything we do with them. Um, I'm working around that because I've had multiple people come in saying they have a tea time at said time that I've had blocked for three weeks because I have an event or I have a group of people making the turn. So that tea time is non existent to begin with. 
-hmm. And they say that they have to see time. They're having multiple golf courses. Yeah. Point, yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, so they so they're not very proficient at it. They really are. They also, I don't so so know. From what you know, I, I yeah. wear a few of those out in a new creek. I get a lot. I just had a few here and there, but we would have them. I get I get majority of them because they confuse Sunset Golf Course in Longmont, Colorado, with Sunset Golf Course in Pennsylvania, Sunset Golf Course in Texas, Sunset Golf Course mm -hmm. in New Jersey. There's, there's, or Maine. Yeah, it's 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 quite it's 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 interesting sometimes when I get those phone calls and they're trying to get transferred to the restaurant. No, I don't have a restaurant. I have a snack bar. <laughs> no, no, you have a restaurant. It's it's outside the pro shop. I'm like, no. And then I see the phone number where they're calling from. He's like, are you calling from Texas? Like, yes, why? I'm like, this is all around Colorado since I of course. And then they start to laugh, and we, we get a little joke going between it, and then we it's, we're working. So as yeah. these things happen, Al, and, and yeah. members of the board, and, and anyone, honestly, that you hear it from, let us know, even in just a little email, to, and describe what happened in depth in terms of what day, what time, what you were frustrated about, so we can track it back. Because we will take it to Michael Hill and to Jennifer, and because it's, it's really they, they're, they're, these people are all outside. None of us have no idea, and I agree. It's, it's a frustrating thing sometimes, and we've had multiple. They've been lately starting to cancel prepays. Yes. I had that conversation today with the golf map folks. So, uh, which is fine as long as they do it right. right. So, anyway, the, the, what I got from the golf map folks today was please give us more detailed information. Can you, you know, can you those, give me an example so that we can go back and then look at it? Those conversations. Oh, so those those yeah, calls. I never heard from my phone and see so what I call them. They never sent a confirmation, which is problematic too. Yeah. So then I called the golf course. I'm like, do I actually have this tea time? And I did. And then on the same vein, does golf net, is they responsible for the back engine for the tea times from all three golf Correct. courses? Because it seems to be, it, it's hanky for lack of a better term. I'll give you an example. Today I wanted to book a tea time. At one of your courses for Sunday around there, there's no tea times available at any of And then I walked in and suddenly it's wide open. And then I tried it again on my phone, and it worked. So I don't know if it's structured for it's every computer or a nice mobile no, device. They, they, they have two different two different platforms that they use for mobile. One for mobile, one yeah. for desktop. But sometimes if your desktop is not working, try your mobile. I was just want some. <coughs> so. You know, another option, um, and I tell customers this whenever they have issues, they go, hey, I want to go to the golf shop. All you have to do is when you get that, when you get it online or um, somebody in Chicago and say, Please stretch it back to the golf course and it'll come right back to us. I mean, oh, sure. that's great. And well, then, and sure, then, sure. And then when, when it does come back, it doesn't, it doesn't quit rain. It rains it rains until we pick it up. So, so if we're helping so otherwise, now you'll get to about like four rain over and transfer over. Well, we never say it wasn't here. Yeah. You know, just letting you know what I'm finding as a customer, I'm sure. How many rounds last year? 100,000. <laughs> and I'm sure. In, in my experience, and I, I worked in IT field for a long time, when they outsource stuff, when it starts to get bad, it gets worse. Just, and that's maybe it's a word of caution, right? No, we appreciate it. We appreciate the feedback because what happened was they actually um, moved it in house because they moved it away from there was a, a separate organization called Golf and Now Answers, and now it's not Golf Now Answers anymore. That guy is gone, and it's now moved mm -hmm. in house. So there has been a transition, and I think you're right, it's gotten worse since the transition. Yeah. So the more feedback that we can give them, the better. So thank you for the feedback. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to I heard that the chairman here taking a motion to the chair. Second. Second.